Hey guys, good evening. It's me, Corizu Team B. I just wanted to um, do a quick um, tutorial on wine tasting. So this is going to be called Wine Tasting 101. Um, there are going to be um, a few things you're going to need in order to um, really experience, you know, the true essence of wine. And I will be sharing some tips and some tricks so that way you can you and your company or your drinking partner can um, get the most satisfaction out of your wines so anyways um, I'll keep this short and sweet um, what you'll need is a wine opener um, so I have this cool wine opener here it has a little like bit of a knife or a razor um, it has the the cork screw and then here to kind of pull this the cork out um, this is good you know especially if you are not in a kitchen and you kind of need something that's you know one and all kind of deal um, this is my favorite wine opener um, this is when I'm I use this when I'm here at my boyfriend's house um, and it's really easy you pretty much just uh, screw the cork in and you um, open the wine bottle and it just pulls out really easily um this one is definitely a little bit more advanced i'm not gonna lie um, there's definitely um, some skills required here but um so anyways so you need a wine opener it doesn't matter what kind if you're in the house this kind will do if you're not in the house you'll need an, an, a little baby knife so that way um so this would be good um and then you know you're gonna need a bottle of wine i'm going to show this one and this is the behringer um, 2009 Cabernet Sauvignon. Um, Behringer is a really um, favorite wine of me and my boyfriends. We just went to Napa Valley last month and it was simply beautiful, perfect weather, perfect ambiance, perfect wine, perfect scenery. So um, I'm wearing my, my Behringer shirt. Um, I got this um, when I was in Napa Valley with my Mayan necklace and then on the back I don't know if you guys can see it but um, it says like follow me to Napa um, I don't know if you guys saw that but anyway hopefully you guys did um, and then you're gonna need a wine glass this is a, a pretty nice sturdy wine glass um, there's a few parts to the wine glass that you'll need to know um, and this is the base this is the stem and this is the body um, and then when you are drinking and sipping wine with family and friends or socializing you either want to keep it at the table or you want to hold it by the stem you never want to hold it you know at the body because your the contact with your hands in the wine is you know very sensitive to temperature so it can compromise the temperature of the wine as you drink it and it can also alter the taste and so very important you can hold it here by the base you can hold it like this or you can just simply set it at the table and then just drink like so um, so anyways um, let's get started you know there are so many different types of wines I'm from California so of course you know I'm a fan of Californian wine I think California wine is probably one of the best in the world uh, for you viewers out there, if you are a viewer in the United States, just keep in mind that alcohol drinking should be done at least by the age of 21 years old. I know in other parts of the country, I mean other parts of the world, drinking um, age requirements are different. Some are 15, some are 18, some are 16. But here in the United States, um, you want to be at least 21 years old to drink. Um, they are very strict about it. I mean. I'm 27. I know I look older, or maybe I look 27. Sometimes I look younger, and they they cart me all the time. So, um, anyways, there are different types of wines. There's reds, there's whites, there's sparklings, um, there's blends, there's things like that. So, there's blushes. Wine is also um, really good for you. Um, it has antioxidants. The ones that have the most antioxidants are the red wines, um, and that. Uh, antioxidant is called resveratrol and that is from the skin of the red wines um, 
One other tip about drinking wine is um, when you store it, you want to have like a little wine cooler or um, you want to keep it in a place that's not too hot. If you're going to, you know, do errands and you're buying wine, you kind of want to leave the window open as if you had a pet in the car because they're very sensitive to weather and temperatures. So while you're doing errands and if you're going grocery shopping and you know your wine is going to be in the car, just kind of leave a crack on the window so that way it's um, getting some air because um, it's very sensitive to you know things like that um, one thing too is that when you have a wine cooler wine likes to be stored this way not this way um, second thing is um, one tip if you like wines and if you want to be um, want to enjoy some of the best wines is you want to focus on the year of the wine and this is 2009, um, the wine is uh, 2009. Um, they say that 2007 is probably the, one of the best years um, for wine. And I do believe it, um, me and my boyfriend are big fans of 2007. Um, most of all of the 2007 uh, wines, it's pretty much almost impossible to get unless you know there are some reserves if you go to a winery. But if you do see any, grab it. Buy as many as you can because, you know, they are selling out. Um, and so pretty much why is the year so important for wine? The year is important because that was the weather the grapes were growing and that was the weather. So you're pretty much drinking the weather. 2007 for the vineyards in California was had probably the best weather. You had perfect humidity, perfect sunshine. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's what it is. You're just drinking really good weather. Um, so anyway, um, so that's that. I think um, this was a very hot summer, 2012. So I think the wine in this this summer will be very good. I think 2012 will be a good year because I know 2000. 11 wasn't as good because it wasn't that hot. So I think the grapes um, in the vineyards respond very well to like a hotter climate. That's why California, you know, sunny California in the northern, you know, California is known for one of the best wines. Um, did you know that we rank probably top five best wines like in the world and California's main sources of business is from wine um, so you know it's a big thing you know like I do admire like the Argentinian wine of course the Spanish and the Italian wine and the French wine but wow you know I do love California wine you know I'm totally representing like to the max so anyways now we'll get started that's a little bit of um, wine you know uh, we're gonna go ahead and open the wine so with this little razor here, you want to just kind of take off the um, the wrapper that's there. That's like a little seal. You want to just open that up. So um, the sharper the knife, the easier. But if you don't have much, you can just kind of like scratch it. And you know, like if you're clumsy like me, just be careful not to cut yourself. So I kind of just, you know, opened it there. And then I'm just going to peel it all off. And... Um, Sometimes it's hard, sometimes it isn't. Um, and then you're gonna get your wine opener. And I don't know if you guys can see me, but. Okay, sorry. So while I'm gonna do this, I'm just gonna open the wine. We're just gonna, you know, you wanna point the screw like right in the center of the cork so that way, just in case you don't finish your wine, you'll be able to re-cork your wine and store it in the cooler or in the fridge, whatever. Uh, wine coolers are the best. My boyfriend has one installed in his living room next to his fireplace. So it's kind of cool, you know, it definitely keeps the wine happy and um, it's served so nicely. So I'm screwing it and you can just pull it out. Um, one tip of when you open wine and you don't have guests yet and you want to kind of um, uh, enhance the flavor of the wine you can let it sit on the door of your fridge on the door on the bottom or the top or wherever 
and just you can let it sit there for about 30 minutes it kind of allows the wine to air you know it wakes it up and so that's important it definitely enhances the flavor they do sell if you go to wine enthusiast stores like Pevmo um, they do sell aerators which is um, a little like tube that's like a little funnel and it adds air to the wine so it's ready to drink immediately um, so anyways pretty much wine tasting is super easy um, you want to um, especially if you're going to like a bar or a fancy restaurant or just a plain old restaurant you want to drink you know a good wine um, so here's my wine glass and you know uh, most places especially in California um, especially if you're going to a place that has um, a nice wine collection they're more than happy to let you try it before you buy it and most of the times restaurant managers take pride in the selection of wines they choose to um, that's part of the restaurant or part of the um, food pairings that they serve so um, you can try it and if you're not happy you know let the um, waiter suggest something for you that's good to complement your meal because you don't want uh, you want to balance. You don't want the wine to be so overbearing that you can't enjoy your meal. You don't want the food to be so, the flavor of the food to be so strong that it's going to overcome, overdo, outdo the wine. So you kind of want a nice little balance. So anyways, uh, when you pour wine and you're just going to taste, and you can do this for your friends, for yourself, for anyone, maybe your girlfriend or your boyfriend if you want to impress them with your new wine connoisseur skills, you want to just pour a tiny bit like that so this you know and hold, I'm holding it you know at the stem by the base and this is how much you want you don't want to pour that much if you're gonna taste so we just remember these three things when you're gonna do a wine tasting you want to sniff the wine you want to swirl the wine like this and then you want to sip the wine and the reason why um, you sniff the wine is because You'll know right away if you're gonna like the taste, if you like the smell. Um, so you can swirl it like this, just for a little bit longer. Um, that's why they don't pour as much when you're doing a wine tasting. It's because you cannot swirl the wine. Swirling the wine adds air to the wine, so that way you can wake this wine up. And if you can, if you think about wine, it's been sitting in an oak barrel for a few years and then it goes in a bottle so you kind of want to wake it up so you smell it again and it smells really good you know it keep in mind when you smell it before you you swirled it and then sniff it again after you swirled it you'll you'll see it smells such a big difference so next you're going to taste the wine after and you can smell Take a sniff and then sip it. Mmm, delicious. Mmm, wow, that's like <laughs> my first drink of the evening. I just got out of work. Um, and wow, that definitely hit the spot. It's delicious. So, anyways, when you taste the wine, you can let it let the little that sip that little amount that's in your mouth you can let it kind of roll around through the different taste buds different parts of your tongue you know you have i think about four or five different taste buds you know there's the spicy the sweet the sour the bitter and then there's another one that's called it's a japanese term i think it's called nami or something like that and um it's it's uh, it's a certain distinct taste you know I'll have to get back to you guys on that but that's what I learned when I went wine tasting in Napa so anyway so that's how you taste wine you know um, especially if you are um, drinking a really nice rare um, vintage wine you want to like in really experience the complex flavors you know the reason why I say that is because um, this has different flavors in it and how are you gonna taste them if, you know this has um, deep berry toasted oak vanilla spice flavors so to enjoy that and really experience it you want to kind of just sip it slow mm, it tastes better so 
so hence the the you know the wine and um, how it tastes better after you know the second glass wine always tastes better after the second glass because the bottle's been open um, it's been it's aired out and um, you you loosen up your taste buds in your tongue so that way you're anticipating a better flavor if that makes sense so anyways that's my take on wine tasting um, Cabernets and red wines the one that I'm just um, tasting with you guys is more of a full-bodied wine so you're definitely going to want to pair it with a nice full flavor meal you know like a steak or some lamb nothing light something more of a heavier uh, meal so anyways guys this is a little bit different from what I normally post up and I hope you guys enjoyed it um, please subscribe if you guys have any questions about wine tasting um, and different wines out there please feel free to leave me a comment and I'll be sure to try to answer your questions thanks again guys um, have a good one bye bye